absolutely love living right here on the waterfront. One of the cool things we have are these underwater lights. They work amazing and they attract fish and everything you see about them, if you've ever looked at them, you'll see the ads, you know, they guarantee you'll have fish out there. It is so true. We love them. However, I noticed the other day they weren't coming on any longer. So let me show you how we go about troubleshooting them and fixing them in case you run into a similar problem. Everybody, in today's video, we are going to do a little bit of a um, repair on our um, underwater fish lights. And we've had these for about two years, and I pulled the lights out of the water because they're starting to get a lot of barnacle growth and muscle growth on them. We have a very rich um, uh, content water here. We got those all cleaned up, but before I took them out, the whole reason I did was not only to clean them, it was also to fix the light. They stopped coming on. I could still hear the sensor click on, so it feels like there's probably power in here. I'm going to take a look and make sure I didn't have a wire come loose or something's bad inside of that board. So, first thing we do, unplug power, make sure we're good, and let's just go ahead and get this panel off of here. We'll start testing and seeing what's happening. It's a nicely sealed box for all the right reasons. This is very interesting. A couple of large transformers in here. light has two wires coming off of it and we have shorted I can actually see the short in here we kind of show you what I've got and we'll figure out what we need to do next and now see what this is <laughs> you can kind of see the transformer box here and just to put things in perspective these two lines right here are the output and here's the input of power so you can kind of see these go right here to one set of wires these go to the other I'm going to zoom in and show you the problem I saw as soon as I took the cover off. So I saw a little bit of this stuff hanging down in there when I pulled it off. And sure enough, as I lift this, I can see it dangling right off of that. And when I look down here, I can see this is all melted up. So something clearly has gone wrong here. We'll see what shorted and see if we can fix it up. So now I'm just taking a little bit of a closer look here. I want to map out where each wire goes, get some of these items loose, and make sure I understand a little bit of the lay of the land. One thing that's important is because some of these wires were burned, some of them weren't connected. So I needed to sort of map out what comes from light one to which transformer to which switch and really just understand its direction. So you're seeing me just sort of um, mapping this out in my head, clearing up the, the paths here, making sure everything is accessible. And remember, obviously the power is off while we do this. You might have noticed I just pulled a little uh, metal insert off of that last wire. That's because the wire nut completely melted off and nothing was in there but the inside of the wire nut. Now that I've got it a little bit mapped out in my head, I'm going to start taking the items apart that I'm going to need to repair. And you can see here I'm trying to do a twist lock on this uh, wire nut and that thing is just not going to even come off of there. I think I'm going to have to cut it with some uh, wire cutters. So as I'm contemplating cutting this off with my wire cutters, I decided to go ahead and make sure I clean up and map out all the other parts, including uh, cutting off the actual uh, light sensor component here as well. You can see it on the top of the box there. You've probably seen me do this in my videos as well for the grill. I often will take my camera out, point to items and identify them, show them where they're connected so that when I'm done, I always have a reference to go back to. Got a couple things here to help out with the task at hand. New wire nuts, nice little brush, some corrosion cleaner. See how all this does. Given how melted this is, I think I'm gonna have to cut these wires off. I'm not getting that out of there. Completely melted away. We're stripping the wires coming off of each transformer. That's our power out to the lights. These are the lines to each light. Same on this one, that's the other light. Nice thick coating on these underwater wires. This is the one that comes from our inbound power. Wires aren't feeling very flexible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, but there's a chance. Oh, I see why, that's a little corroded. Look at that. A little bit of corrosion on that one. We'll clean it up here in a minute. All right, so we've got our power in, our two transformers, 
and our two output lines to the actual lights. Get all these guys cleaned up a little bit. Spraying a little corrosion spray on here. Hope avoid any of that from happening anymore. Camera's on the left and I'm left-handed. That doesn't make it easy. <laughs> Now I just went and got a, a wire nut I saw in the garage. I have a smaller one, but I'm afraid that's too small. I think this will be a better size. All right, let's get all these guys kind of lined up here. Tuck them all in together. And just twist these guys right together here. I will use my wire trimmers here. Grab the top and twist. Feels good. Tuck that guy right back in there again. All right. So we definitely still have to get this piece going. I, I've seen a lot of corrosion right in here. I think I'm going to have to replace this wire. I'm hoping I can replace it without having to buy a new light sensor. That's what this is here. It's just a light measuring sensor. This connects to my ground, and then I have essentially when the light uh, the light comes on. Oh, I got this. Also connects to um, this connects to power. Shoot. That needs to go into that white one. Dang it. This goes to ground, so it has power. Light sensor goes in, and it triggers this one back off to the switches on the transformers. All right, so the wires are pretty rough right here. This one's a little burnt up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it temporarily just to see if this works. I just went ahead and ordered one of these on Amazon. It's $17. Bucks. Uh, it comes with the photo cell and the base. Uh, Easy enough, but um, yeah, let's get this thing going on here. What's kind of cool is it shows an arrow pointing north so you know which direction to put this. So remember, it's a light sensor. That's going to be an important factor. <laughs> that one in here, let's go ahead and get all the wires tied up to it. I'm going to start with this white one because I'm going to take this, this thing off here. It's going to be the least amount of room. Now we're going to have to connect this red two wires off the transformer. I'm going to clean these up a little bit and connect that right to our photo cell. Definitely have to replace this because this has corrosion in it. My guess is this is where the problem started right here. Now we're going to connect our ground back up. Shouldn't say our ground or neutral. When I get this new photo cell, I'm going to put a lot of corrosion cleaning material in all of this. And now it's just a matter of popping our cell back on. All right, power this thing on and see what the heck happens. Now we've got this guy plugged in. I don't see smoke, that's always a good starting sign. <laughs> I am gonna go ahead and put this right over my photo cell. Don't see anything there. Let's see if the lights look like they're coming on in these buckets. I can hear the transformers buzzing, that's a good thing. And if I look right down in here, I do see my lights starting to come on. They get brighter over a few moments. I'll go ahead and cover this up, put the photo sensor back on again and we'll see they come up to the full brightness. I know that they, they come on very slowly when uh, when they're in the water. I've never actually come out of the water and looked to see how long it takes for them to brighten all the way up. There we go. Looks good. So now it was just a matter of putting the lights back in the water and uh, I'm going ahead and putting these behind the pylons so that they'd be protected anytime a boat pulls up to the dock or something like that. Took a little bit of time, but wanted to go ahead and get them set out in about four and a half, maybe five feet depth of water. All right, I have now manually tested them. Pretty tough to see what they look like during the day, so let's come back as soon as it's dark.